In this short video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at an alternative way of conducting a back test. And this alternative way makes use of what we call a log likelihood ratio, okay, or the LR statistic. So let's take a look at how to make this alternative back test work. So to understand this, let's quickly recap how we do a back test typically. The way we do it, we do it as a, as a hypothesis test. Let's write down the hypothesis that we usually test. The null hypothesis, H0, we write it as the number of exceptions, let's note it by X, is equal to alpha, which is level of significance, times T where t is the backtest window. So the alternate hypothesis, how you would write it, you would write it as x not equal to alpha t, right? So this test is typically, you know, it's a two-tailed test. So let's now do an alternative formulation. In this formulation, let's not work with the number of exceptions, rather let's work with what we call a failure rate. Okay, let's, let's define it first. A failure rate, you can define it as x, which is the number of exceptions, that divided by t, the, the backtest window. You can also treat this t as the number of trials. So this failure rate is the number of exceptions or failures that upon the total number of trials. So if your VAR model is really functioning the way it should, and it's really designed and implemented the way it should be designed, you would expect this failure rate to be approximately equal to the level of significance, right? So this we know from the definition of VAR. So if this were to be true, and if somebody were to then ask you to write down the probability of actually obtaining a number of exceptions equal to this number, okay? So this is my random number of exceptions and this is one particular realization of it. So if somebody were to ask you to write down, to write down this probability, you know that this x, it basically follows a binomial sort of a distribution with parameters as n, which is number of trials, and the probability of success to be alpha, right? So if this is, if x is following this distribution, you can write down this probability as n, I, I should write t, so total number of trials, actually I should write t here, right? So total number of trials, which is t, the back test window, t c x, the total number of successes, which in this case is x, and I would write it, the probability of that, I would write it as alpha to the power x, and that times the no, total number of failures, which is t minus x, and the probability of each of these failures is one minus alpha, right? So this is how I would write it, if ideally speaking, right? Now, if what I observe is this as my failure rate. I can write down the same probability as let's say t c x, but now instead of using the probability of success to be alpha, let me use that probability to be the observed failure rate, which is x upon t, that to the power x times one minus x upon t, that to the power t minus x, okay? Now, if this were indeed to be true, then we would see that the probabilities either computed using this method or, uh, or sorry, this input or rather computed using this input for the probability of success would turn out to be very, very close to one another, right? So we can write down that if this assumption is true, what it implies is that TCX X to the X by T to the power X 1 minus x by t to the power t minus x should be approximately very close to tcx alpha to the power x 1 minus alpha to the power t minus x. So let's do this. All this that I'm doing is a very sort of layperson's way to understand what I'm going to do next. So let's do this. Let's cancel this off. Let's take this entire thing down here and let's square it. So what do we get? We get x by t to the power x, one minus x by t to the power t minus x, that divided by alpha to the power x, 
1 minus alpha to the power t minus x and I'm asking you to basically square this entire number right so this number you would you would agree that you would expect this number even after squaring to be a number which is close to 1 let's do this now let's take a log on both sides so if you take a log on both sides this is what you get and this is the statistic that is reported to us in our prescribed reading and that is the, the log likelihood ratio statistic so let's write it down this is LRUC UC means unconditional coverage so basically what we are saying here is that every trial in that backtest window is drawn from the same distribution and it is independent of one another so LRUC after taking a log the 2 in the exponent comes down so it would come out to be by the way let's take a natural log so it will come out to be 2 ln of x by t to the power x 1 minus x by t to the power 1 minus x minus 2 times the log of alpha to the power x 1 minus alpha to the power t minus x this is what you see right now did this change our hypothesis test? Yes. So the hypothesis test that we'll be conducting now looks something like this. The null hypothesis, I would write it as, let's say the failure rate is equal to alpha. So see, my null hypothesis previously was x is equal to alpha t. So now I have changed it a bit, right? So let's now write this as our null hypothesis and let's treat this likelihood ratio to be our test statistic. So what is the distribution of this LR? The distribution of LR, LR UC, is actually given in books. We're not going into details of how this distribution is arrived at, but let's take it as the likelihood ratio. This test statistic is chi square distributed with one degree of freedom let's quickly take no let's quickly do like a ballpark analysis of this number LRUC because that will help us understand what sort of test is this new hypothesis test remember the previous one the previous hypothesis test was a two-tailed test right so in that test if x the observed number of of exceptions is either too low or too high you end up rejecting the null hypothesis okay and the null hypothesis if it's rejected it means that the model is a bad model it's not really a good model so if x is what you were working with before what you are working with now is this new statistic lr and what i'm saying here is that if indeed your assumption is true and that is your failure rate is very very close to alpha what you would observe is as we've you know tackled with in the previous page that your LRUC would come to a number which is very close to zero remember we had a one on the right hand side if you take a log of that it gets you a zero that means if this assumption is true your LRUC is a number close to zero if this assumption is not true which means that your failure rate is either too high as compared to the alpha or let's say too low as compared to the alpha what you would see is that this LR is actually a very high number so deviations on either side from this expected value of alpha makes the LRUC to be a high number what does it tell you it tells you that this no longer is a, like a two-tailed test this becomes more like a one-tailed test where high values of lr the log likelihood ratio ends up rejecting the null model the the null hypothesis okay so let's do this let's pick some alpha which is the alpha for the back test let's qualify it by writing a b as a subscript so if you pick this alpha which is alpha b and if you know that this log likelihood ratio is chi square distributed then to conduct this hypothesis test at this significance level let's pick a critical value of this LRUC right what would that be so that would be LRUC star UC remember stands for unconditional coverage that would be picked from a chi square distribution of one degree of freedom and I pick it corresponding to an area of 1 minus alpha b. So all I'm saying here is I'm picking that number or that quantile from the chi-square distribution which leaves an area 1 minus alpha b 
to its left. So once I have this number and I've told you that a ballpark or intuitive analysis of this LR tells me high LR leads to or is implied from too, too big a deviation of the failure rate from alpha, right? So if LR, so my, my net decision rule is if the observed LR you see is greater than the LR critical value, which is picked corresponding to alpha B, the backtest level of significance, I will end up rejecting the model or rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay. Now, uh, what this, this actually then begs this question. Do the results of this technique match the results of the hypothesis test that we have done as part of the reading? What, how did that test work? The test worked like this. Basically, we set our null hypothesis as number of exceptions is equal to alpha times t as our null and alternate was number of exceptions not equal to alpha t. This was a two-tailed test, right? So how do we define its test statistic? The test statistic is x which is observed minus the x which is hypothesized, which is alpha t, that divided by the standard deviation of this x and which is alpha times 1 minus alpha times t, right? We assume that this number is very close to the standard normal and then we can use this assumption to work out critical values of the x or actually critical values for the z that can help us reject or accept or do not reject the null hypothesis, right? So if you were to actually take an example and work out these values, it will help you understand these two techniques really well. Take this example of alpha of var computation to be 1%, the back test window to be let's say 1000 days. So if you were to work out the chi-square value corresponding to let's say a 5% level of significance for back testing, so let's call this alpha b equal to 5%, then this number, you can check that this number comes to 3.84. And if you were to compute the LR, you see for various numbers of or various choices of these exceptions x, you will find that you will end up rejecting, sorry, you will end up accepting or not rejecting the null hypothesis if this x lies between 4 to 17, 4 and 17 not included, okay? And this is for a 5% level of significance. If level, if these exceptions lie between 4 and 17, we know that the expected number for the exceptions is 10, it's 1% 1 of 1000. If the number lies between 4 and 17, 4 and 17 not included, you will not reject the null hypothesis. That's the conclusion from the log, like, log likelihood ratio method. If you were to do the same test using that, that binomial and normal assumption method, the one which we typically do as part of our curriculum, you would see that the same answer comes to roughly this. So it comes to the same numbers, but it, it comes to 4 included. So that means if your number of exceptions was four, then in that method, the one which we do in practice, you still do not reject the null, okay? While in case of this method, for four as number of exceptions, you would end up rejecting the null. So it's ballpark the same, but it's very slightly different from one another, right? So in this video, what we've therefore covered is an alternative method, and that is the log likelihood ratio method.